माई डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू हरजीत कॉर्स गेम ट्यूटोरियल्स नाउ इट्स टाइम टू नो अबाउट हॉर्सेज एंड डिफरेंट पीरियड्स लेट्स बिगिन फ्राम हॉर्सेज एंड ईओ सीन सो लेट्स नो विच वर द हॉर्सेज एंड ईओ सीन पीरियड दे वर हेराकोथीरियम ईओ हेपस ओरो हेपस एंड एपी हेपस सो फॉर मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन लेट्स स्टार्ट फ्राम द हेराकोथीरियम एंड ईओ हेपस which descended from five toed hoofed mammals yes heracotherium and eohippus were descended from five toed hoofed mammals heracotherium fossils were obtained from london clay whereas eohippus fossils obtained from big horn basin in north america heracotherium and eohippus were very similar to each other So let's know about the features of Eohippus small dog size browsing animals skull and neck were short hind limb was slightly longer than fore limb fore limb had four digits second third fourth and fifth whereas the hind limb had three digits only so let's continue with the features of Eohippus next we have is all the toes touched the ground and had pads under neat all the toes touched the ground and had pads underneath all and fibula were stout and were well built free radia and tibia respectively low crown teeth and teeth were 44 in number cerebral hemispheres were small and smooth and they neither covered the olfactory bulb nor the midbrain heracotherium also had similar features some of them are mentioned below forest dweller which also used to browse on soft vegetation small dog size nearly 60 cm in length four limbs had four toes and hind limb had three had a pad underneath underside the toes so uh, had a pad underside or uh, the toes low crown teeth teeth were 44 in number short diastema so let's know about the what is diastema it's the space between front teeth and cheek teeth so let's now uh, move to the next one which is the orohippus so the fossils were recovered from bridger bats new mexico so the orohippus fossils and a little higher than eohippus browsing animal four limbs had four toes and hind limbs had three middle digit in both toes was prominent third and fourth premolars exhibited a trend towards molarization next move to epihippus which was slightly larger than orohippus four limb had four digits and hind limb had three digits forest residing browser last two premolars were molar like in appearance these forms became extinct by end of eocene and got replaced by mesohippus so before moving to that we have the four limb of eohippus here which i have drawn and you can see the uh next we have is hind limb of eohippus you can all see the um, tarsals and flanges so next move to the horses on oligocene so for the horses in oligocene we have mesohippus and meohippus so let's start from the mesohippus first which was sheep sized measuring 18 to 24 inches in height neck was short long and slender legs a uh, number of toes in both limbs four limbs and hind limbs reduced to three trunk was long and slender with more arched back all the three digits touched the ground but middle one was larger feet had pad under the toes showing beginning of hoof dentition was brachydont that is molars were still low crown diastema appeared cerebral hemispheres were enlarged So let's move forward to the meohippus uh which was uh, larger than mesohippus I uh, replaced mesohippus in late oligocene for forest dweller and a browser for limb as well as hind limbs were three toed still were uh sorry it's a mistake here it was still a uh, low crown that is the brachydont sorry for the mistake here um 
it was uh, the temptation was steadily breaking on. So let's move forward to the horses in Miocene. So the horses in Miocene were Parahippus and Marichippus, which is also called the ruminant horse. So let's start from the Parahippus, although these had three toes in both fore and hind limb three digit in both became more predominant limbs were short dentition became nearly hypsodont and snout considerably elongated so let's move forward to marigipus first three toed graze uh, feeding on grass so marigipus was the first three toed grazer feeding on the grass Side toes, second and fourth, were reduced and no longer touched the ground. Third, that is the central one, had large convex hoof. Ligaments of the muscles were very well developed in Marichippus. So, let's continue with it. Spring mechanism was present in Marichippus. Foot pads were absent. Diastema was very well developed. Hips were on dentition, uh, that is high crowned, and cerebral hemispheres. So you can see that uh, hypsodont dentition is there. Um, uh, cerebral hemispheres were large, convoluted, and showing fundamental pattern of fissures. So you can see here the forelimb of Marichippus very clearly. You can see the hoof here on the third digit, and in the same way, this is the hind limb of Marichippus. There's again the hoof, and next move forward to horses in. Pleocene. So in the Pleocene we have Hipparion and Pleohippus. Pleohippus is also called a Pleocene horse. So let's start from the Hipparion which was size nearly 40 inches in height, last three-toed ancestor of horse. So this is to remember that Hipparion was the last three-toed ancestor of horse. Teeth were straight with cups adapted for grinding. And next we have the Pleohippus, which is also one of the important horses. It had it was the first one-toed horse. So it had only one toe, it was sized 40 inches in height. Side toes, second and fourth were reduced. In some species, it changed to splints as in modern horses. Crowns of upper molars were similar to those of modern horse and this also showed the increased in height. So besides this, uh, the preorbital length of skull was also increased. There was increase in size and complexity. So forelimb of Pleohippus is shown here. You can see the splint bone and in the same way you can see the splint bone in hind limb also. So let's move forward with the horses in Pleistocene. I know it's going a longer but it will be this is the last one so in the Pleistocene we have only one horse which is the Equus which is the modern horse and it was uh, sized increased as compared to Pleohippus about 60 inches in height second and fourth digit were represented by splints whereas first and fifth were completely lost so the first and fifth were completely lost in equus whole body weight is balanced on third digit and it had well developed hoof molar crowns were much elongated enlarged brain cerebral hemispheres have grooved surface so the evolution of horse has resulted in development of an intelligent long-legged swift running animal suited to live and feed in open grasslands so you can see uh, here the forelimb of equus is here which was having a well developed third toe with well developed hoof in the same way you can see the hind limb of equus showing all the parts drawn well and so this was all about uh, evolution of ours thanks for watching this video please like subscribe subscribe and share thank you